Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at what are called the three Pythagorean trig identities, and we're also going to use them in simplifying trig expressions. All right, so looking at what are called the Pythagorean trig identities, the first one, the basic one, comes from the unit circle. So we'll draw something real quick over here. If you have an angle somewhere here, and that angle is theta, and there's coordinates of points on that unit circle there. Unit circle meaning the radius is one. You have the y coordinate and you have the x coordinate. But as again, I'm hoping you know, the y coordinate is the sine ratio for that angle. And the x coordinate is the cosine ratio for that angle. And so what you have there with this little right angle triangle is you have sine squared plus cos squared equals one squared using the Pythagorean relation. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always equal to one. As we've seen with identities before, you can substitute in some numbers here and you can see by evaluating that left side, you're always gonna get one no matter what value of theta you choose. You can write this identity in a couple of other forms that sometimes are useful. That's the basic form that you see it in, but sometimes it's helpful to recognize it in other forms. Since we know it's an identity, we can rearrange it a little bit. If this term were moved to the other side, it would say cos squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. Or if you did the same thing with the cos squared, if that were on the other side, then we have sine squared on this side is equal to one minus cos squared theta. So that's the basic Pythagorean identity, but there are two other Pythagorean identities that are related to that. The ones that are related to that we get by, if we take that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1, if we were to divide both sides by sine squared, so in other words we have to divide each term on each side by sine squared, we would get that sine squared over sine squared is one. We get one here. And cos squared over sine squared is actually cos over sine is equal to cotangent. So cos squared over sine squared is equal to cotangent squared. And then on the other side here, one over sine squared is equal to cosecant squared, all right? And we can do a similar thing by dividing both sides by cosine squared. So, so I'm gonna write this part first because this is the easiest part. Cos squared over cos squared is one. So we have one there. And added to that is sine squared over cos squared, which is tangent squared. Now I know I've written it in the reverse order here, but I want them to match up nicely and look look similar. So that side together is one plus tan squared, but then on the other side, one over cosine squared is secant squared theta. So you actually have three different Pythagorean identities there. You have this basic one, which is the one that you probably are gonna see the most, is sine squared plus cos squared is one, but then it's good to know that there's these other two forms. One plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared, and one plus tangent squared is secant squared. So those three together are the Pythagorean trig identities. Now we're gonna look at using them in simplifying some expressions. So there's a couple of examples we can start with here. Now in this first one, Maybe at this point, this doesn't jump out at you, but hopefully after you work with trig identities and trig expressions enough, it will, that one minus cos squared, again, we saw up above that sine squared plus cos squared is one, or the other forms that we wrote it as, one minus cos squared is equal to sine squared. So we can change this top part here to sine squared. And then we have sine on the bottom, and then if you have sine squared divided by sine, sine to the power of two on the top divided by sine to the power of one on the bottom, you're just left with sine of x, all right? So that's that as a single trig function. The second one here, 
if you recognize, that looks like one of those identities that we had up there. 1 plus cotangent squared, we can change that. That 1 plus cotangent squared, we can change it into cosecant squared. Right, so we've replaced that 1 plus cotangent squared with that. And then we're going to leave the rest the same, which is cosecant theta on the bottom. And in a similar way there, cosecant squared divided by cosecant is just cosecant, all right? Now let's say you didn't recognize this as an identity and you went with the, the strategy that a lot of people adopt as their tried and true go-to strategy, which is change everything to sine and cosine. It's still gonna work. It's just gonna be a fair bit longer. So if we were gonna do that, we'll go through this. Probably what a person would have done is they would have changed that cotangent into cos squared theta over sine squared theta. And then if we have this, we'd probably change that to sine squared theta over sine squared theta because then we can create this common denominator there. And then on the bottom cosecant, probably a person using that strategy would change that to one over sine theta. And then what they would probably do is add those fractions on top together, and so you'd get sine squared plus cos squared all over that single denominator of sine squared theta, and then you have one over sine theta on the bottom. And at that point then, hopefully this jumps out at you, that that sine squared plus cos squared, because it is more common and people tend to recognize it more, that that can get replaced with just a 1. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So you would have 1 over sine squared, and then you'd have on the bottom 1 over sine. Running out of room here. And at that point you have fraction divided by fraction, so a good strategy again is to change it to that top fraction, 1 over sine squared, times the reciprocal of the bottom, so times sine over 1. And at that point then we have sine squared down here and just a sine up here. So we can cancel this with one of these, which we can say that's gonna be gone there. And we just have a one over sine theta, which is equal to cosecant theta. So it's the same value as what we got up here, just with quite a few more steps. So it's helpful if you recognize those other versions of the Pythagorean identities. All right, we're gonna do a couple more examples here. So in this first one here, since there's three different trig functions involved, we're going to go with the strategy of changing them all to sine and cosine. So this first part here, secant, is the same as 1 over cosine. And this sine we're going to leave just by itself. And then tangent we're going to change to sine over cosine. And then we can write the second thing as a single fraction like this, let's write it as sine squared over cosine. Now we have two fractions we're subtracting, but they already have a common denominator, so we can just go ahead and subtract them the way they are. On the top we have one minus sine squared, and we have cosine on the bottom, and hopefully you recognize one minus sine squared is the same as cos squared, one of those alternate versions of that basic one. Cos squared over cos theta, and then what that's going to leave us with is cos squared over cosine is just cos theta. So there you go. Second one up here, we're going to go with the same strategy. It's already a fraction, but we're going to change this into a fraction and this into a fraction. So we're going to end up with a complex fraction here, but we are going to end up with 1 over sine x minus sine x. And then on the bottom, we're going to change that cotangent into cosine over sine. Now, we could go with the same strategy here of that we've used many times before, which is make these two things on the top uh, fractions with a common denominator, put them together, and then go from there. But what we're going to do is this other strategy we've used once or twice before, which is multiply to clear the fractions out. Because if you look, we have 
sine is the denominator there and sine is the denominator here. So we can make this look a lot simpler quickly by multiplying the top and the bottom by sine x over sine x. Because sine x times that, one over sine x is just one. And sine x times sine x is sine squared x. And then on the bottom, sine x times this, cos over sine, the divide by sine, multiplied by sine, those cancel out and you just have cos x on the bottom. And now what do you know? It actually looks very similar to this expression over here. And we can change that top part to cos squared x divided by cos, and it's gonna be the same thing here, cosine, all right? So that's one method of doing each of those. There are gonna be other versions, other ways of doing it. And before we're done, it's probably worth pointing out here that uh, in each of these cases here, we had this binomial and it turned into a single trig function at the end. And the step that allowed us to do that was turning this one minus sine squared into cos squared. So when you use these Pythagorean trig identities, often it'll result in either turning something with two terms into something with one term, or if you were using them in reverse, it's turning something with one term into something with two terms, all right? So that's it, that is an introduction and some use of Pythagorean trig identities to simplify trig expressions.